Hey there, my name is Pete and in this video I'm going to discuss how I passed the AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate Exam in one and a half months. So I'm going to discuss what courses I took, what practice exams I used, and also any tips that I would advise anyone that's going to be taking this exam. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. Just for context, I work as a full-time software engineer and I started prepping for this exam around middle of October of 2021. I passed this exam on my first attempt on December 7th of 2021 and I've only had very little experience with AWS. I've only used a few services like EC2, S3, and DynamoDB. One of the first things that I did when I started prepping for this certification was I was searching for top rated courses to take. The first place that I looked was Reddit and Reddit had a subreddit of AWS certifications and there were two courses that were highly recommended within the subreddit. One of them was a course taught through a cloud guru, which was essentially a web app platform which taught various different cloud providers like GCP, Azure, AWS, and you can really learn a lot of things related to cloud on this platform. And the other course that was recommended pretty frequently was a course taught by Stephen Merrick on Udemy, which was geared mainly towards the AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate exam. I ended up going with the course on Udemy because I didn't think that it made sense for me to pay the premium price when I wasn't looking to learn all the cloud providers and I was kind of looking to only get the certification at this time. So I think it would have been maybe a better deal to go with a cloud guru because it, it gives you a very a large array of things to learn. But since I was looking for a specialty certification, I didn't think it made sense to pay that price. So after I found the course that I wanted to take, I studied this course for about a month. Now keep in mind, this course has 30 hours worth of video content, which is a lot of video content to consume. So throughout this entire time of watching some of these videos, I would really watch them at 2x speed. And to be frank, I would fall asleep through more than half of them. So I kind of deferred to reading a lot of documentation on services that I weren't too clear with and kind of use the videos as kind of just a high level overview of a particular service within AWS itself. Now I would study anywhere from two to five hours each and every single day. I knew that I wanted to time box how much time I wanted to give myself. That's why I decided on one month. Although I probably could have got this certification a little bit sooner, I did not want to spend like eight to 10 hours a day just cramming and studying for this exam. So I thought two to five hours really made the most sense for me. After completing the course, which took about one month, I was looking to see where I was at in terms of all this new knowledge and information that I gained. And I wanted to apply it in a very similar manner to the actual AWS exam itself. So I looked into AWS exams and there's one individual named John Bonzos, which a lot of people recommended to me. So I ended up taking a lot of practice exams through him. And one of the reasons why I really liked the platform that was offered by John Bonzos was because there were two modes that were particularly helpful for myself. And those modes were, the first one was a timed mode. So you can simulate the actual time for the real exam and kind of go through it as if it was the real exam. The second one was kind of like a practice mode which would essentially give you the answers or the incorrect answers in real time for each question that you answer. So rather than wait till the end to figure out what your score was, if you wanted to kind of in real time know which ones were incorrect or which ones were correct, you can use this practice mode. Now, in addition to some of the practice exams that I used, I also reviewed a lot of white papers, architecture diagrams, and I also went and did a deep dive for the AWS Well-Architected Framework. And kind of when I was going through a lot of the architecture diagrams, I knew that I had to re-familiarize myself with a lot of the concepts relating to the networking side of cloud, just because I personally feel, for my opinion, throughout the entire learning experience, I think one of the most difficult concepts to really master was the networking aspect of it, just because the networking topology can get really, really tricky with all these various different terms and various different concepts like EPCs and NAT gateways and all these various different terms that are related to networking. And as I mentioned, they can get pretty hairy. So I wanted to re-familiarize myself with some of the concepts relating to VPC itself before I took the exam. So after I felt like I was ready to take the exam, I scheduled it immediately just because I didn't want to procrastinate the process any longer. So I ended up scheduling it through Pearson View, which is the online format of the exam, which you can take at home. But there is another way to take it, which you can go to a testing facility if that's something that you would want to do. Now, 
the version that I took, which was online, costed $150. And you have to download some software to essentially check your computer and your network speed. And also one of the things that you're gonna have to do on test day is they're gonna make you check in 30 minutes early to show the proctor around your room to make sure that the room is also up to standard for their testing policy. Now, here are some tips that I would give to anyone that's going to take the exam. So the first thing is if you have an external monitor and you're using a laptop, you're gonna to wanna to disconnect it from the outlet. Um, this is just gonna save you some time. The person that's gonna go through and examine your room to make sure that it's up to par is gonna ask you to do that. So you can get that done ahead of time. Number two is if you're using a laptop, make sure you plug in your charger because the software that you download kind of takes control of your entire computer when you're taking the exam and there's no indicator for the battery percentage. So make sure that you plug in your laptop charger. Number three, use the process of elimination. So let's say the question is a consumer is wanting to migrate their relational database over to AWS. And there's two answers that are like DynamoDB or AWS Elasticache. Now you already know those are two answers that you completely get rid of because one of the keywords was relational database. And we know that DynamoDB is a non-relational database and Elasticache is more like an in-memory key value a data store. So you can already eliminate those two answers. Now with the other two, they're going to be very similar in nature, but at least now you have a 50% chance to choose the one that you think makes the most sense. So use the process of elimination. I hope you found those tips useful. One more thing I want to add is that you have 140 minutes to take the exam. So if you have any questions that you're not too certain with, flag them for review and review them at the end of the exam. Once the exam is complete, you're given an indicator whether you pass or you fail, but you're not given your score or the actual badge itself. That takes up to five business days. For myself, it took one business day. Now, I wish you the best of luck if you're gonna be taking any AWS certification, and I hope you liked and enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe and post any comments that you have in the comment section below. I will answer every single comment that's posted on this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.